I mean, the first flash is his metabolism got accelerated. What was the deal with the other one? Uh, the Golden Age Flash. What was he like yeah. some military experiment gunner eye or something? <laughs> Actually, it, Jay Garrick was the first uh, Flash. And, yeah, he was kind of a military experiment. How did I know that's what it was? <laughs> well, not really. More of an experiment on himself in a college. Oh, yeah, that's Every supposed to... Gallon, that, that, you'll really recognize this from the TV show. Yeah, that, 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 that's supposed to be the origin story for, like, Flash's, uh, like, Kid Flash or whatever, or, or son. Like, he's he discovers that formula and uses it on himself or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kenny Garrick did that to himself, but he was an old man, and he was up there in the age. Barry Allen, you'll recognize this origin. He was in the police forensics working on, being, you know, like a CSI agent. Until he was hit by a bolt of lightning that hit some chemicals that caused him to go really fast. Yeah, I, I, anyways, before we go on this, uh, in case you're wondering why the title is called Damn You Marvel, before we got the show started here, we have been tripping on the what the effiness between yada 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 and yada yada. But anyways, moving on to te technology, because that's what the show is actually about, where the hell do we want to start? There's not a lot this week, there's only some uh, minor stuff. Uh, anybody have a preference on a start point? Uh, let's go with the beginning. Okay, um... Well, it's... Apparently there's now a way to turn off the face recognition in Facebook. I, I, I you know, I, I'm not sure there's really a point to this, because my guess is even if you turn it off, Facebook is probably still doing the face recognition on your stuff anyways. Uh, if you're really paranoid about the face recognition, I'm wondering why you're uploading your pictures to Facebook. Uh, well, someone could be uploading pictures of you and tag your face to it, you know? Oh, uh, I mean, okay, first off, how many of us here actually have a Facebook? Uh, I have two. Okay, Kami has some, this, this has none, I don't have one. Mark, uh, Bit, you got one? Nope. Nope. Okay. Tommy, as the only person here who actually uses Facebook, I what don't possesses it? <laughs> yeah. Someone tagged uh, my face once. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what exactly would possess somebody who would really be concerned about, you know, Facebook using the recognition stuff to try and you know, follow them around the web through their face and stuff, uh, be giving Facebook their face to start with. Well, I didn't give it, her family member did. And I just let them take a picture and they upload the Facebook and put my, attach my name to that face and there we go, you know. Okay. But they're the trip to Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, so you're, uh, we should burn you as a witch. WITCH! <laughs> <laughs> A anyways, moving on to something a little more tangible. Um, but your favorite phrase in iWorld is, you have no excuse for the indefendable. Maybe you can explain this. How come every single time Apple launches a product, somebody else owns the name? Every single time. I don't know. I, I think I should have named it iPod or something. <laughs> I, I what? I pup. <laughs> Wait, how is I pup an appropriate name for for that? <laughs> That's why I'm saying I put it in. Yeah. Come here, I puppy. I puppy. I puppy. Here, I puppy. <laughs> I'm sure some Apple fanatic has named their dog that. Like they have I cat and I puppy. <laughs> I have an I fish. Oh, Emic. <laughs> yeah, well, what I was getting at is, you know, I was like, oh joy, oh joy, I get to sync up with the magic iPuff. <laughs> and, you know, just hope that Puff's 
been a magic dragon. I'm sorry, it should be a magic dragon. That's, that's where I was going with it. Because <laughs> if I say magic dragon, the, the copyright police will come in here and thro and drag me away to a little room and throw me away and forget that I ever existed. You know? <laughs> I thought the magic dragon was a kitty thing. An asshole's a cat thing. <laughs> well, can they put you in jail for invading copyright? Uh, not yet, but I'm sure they're working on it. All they can do now is find me and take a bunch of shit. <laughs> and then... I know they can't get you for trademark. Ah, well, they can sue the bejesus out of you for trademark. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, didn't Apple just uh, have to settle out of court with Nokia now? Because they lost that case? Yeah, no, the, the, here's the thing here. that When they use somebody else's registered name like this... Basically what happens is the person who owns the name they just stole goes, cha-ching! <laughs> they sue them. They, you know, they're not interested in the process of this big, long, drawn-out court thing of proving. They're just like, uh, pl pl please, please make the check out for blah million. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it, I was thinking of making a, uh, an iPhone, but... It was spelled A-I-P-H-O-N-E, but like the Japanese word for love is I. You would get in trouble with that for two companies, because Apple got in trouble for iPhone, because who was it? I want to say Cisco had an internet phone. <laughs> so, of course, it was the iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> but it would be spelled differently. No, 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 it was, it, was, it was an iPhone. You know, I for internet. If people forget, all this I stuff used to have to do with it was supposed to mean yeah. internet. <laughs> and yes, I, mean, I have an internet. Yeah, I, I, has that what? What? Ben, you're a Mac. You're a Mac. A uh, Mac addict. Um, what the hell does the I stand for now? It's still, it's still on the internet. I, I just think that's I yeah, has the iPod, become a, the a branding iPod. between Apple now. It's used really everywhere. So the iCloud, which is what they're getting sued over here, is the internet internet? Uh-huh. Hi, hi. Hey, did, I, I want me some of the internet internet. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> like I mean, I've never liked the i thing. I've, I've, I've posted uh, several times that they need to drop the i. So. Well, at least they're still not doing the e thing. You know, <laughs> it used to be i this and e that. <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, continuing on the Apple, unless y'all want to keep... Speaking of Emacs, remember the text editor? That one that would confuse us now? <laughs> There's a bunch of so much that came after them for the Emacs. <laughs> That's uh, the first time that Apple had problems with copyrights. No, I'm trying to think. For the... Uh, yeah, uh, actually that's what it is. Yeah, registered trademark. It is... Steal somebody, and they write a check. I guess that's one way to spend your cash reserves. You know, uh, a personal. Like, one uh, atheist guy. Uh, he's, he's very prompt on a lot of uh, atheist people. Uh, anyway, it, what about no, it's just that Apple had a little problem with, with using his name in a commercial, and the guy ended up suing there as Apple a lot. Well, you know, and this, this is one of those things... All right, here's, here's the official meeting from uh, the keynote. Um, this is the first iMac introduction, okay? Right. And I think this is, what, 1998. I means Internet, Individual, Instruct, Inform, and Inspire. So, technically, it could mean Inspired Internet? I'm not sure that accurately describes iCloud. I'm only framing. Uh, no, and, and, and you know, and this is one of those things. Given the, I, I honestly don't understand why Apple keeps stepping their foot in this crap, because it's not like they don't have the resources to do the needed due diligence to find out. By the way, does somebody own this name that we're fixing to throw millions of dollars of marketing into? And if they do, we're going to have to throw millions of more dollars out to well, settle I mean, to get. Well, no, no, see, but that's the thing. No, but they still got sued over it. Well, no, they no. had to remove the name well, no, see, by a company that didn't even own that name. 
Well, now see, that's what's so stupid about this. You would think by this point, with the number of times they've had these just pure waste of money suits, that somebody at Apple would have said, maybe we should do some due diligence a few weeks before our keynotes and make sure we're picking a name that isn't owned by someone else. That's the other trolling going around with this as of late. I have to deal with this at least twice a week between my various clients as a webmaster. Somebody gets, I call this the copyright, copyright ambulance chaser. They're, they're, they're a law firm or a collection agency acting as a law firm that does nothing but write cis and deceased letters that say, you're violating this copyright, which I, or, or trademark, or whatever, that I don't own, but take it down or give me money or I'll take your website down. And the sad thing is, even though they don't own it, all they have to do is copy that letter to your host, the people who are hosting your site, and they will take it down. So it's like blackmail 101. It's the stupidest thing in the world. And there's people that do this. They just send thousands of these letters out and collect money all year round. I call them, they're basically ambulance chasers. And they're making yeah. money. <laughs> but the problem is, don't these people have something called a memory, like an old seven, like an old fifties cartoon that was called Mighty Mouse? Mighty Mouse. <laughs> you know, is that we had Mighty Mouse and the yellow spandex, and then his British counterpart in the yellow car, Danger Mouse. <laughs> For those of you, yeah, they, some company like we own the uh, trademark to Mighty Mouse. You mean you actually own the cartoon? No, the uh, product, right? Well, and, and honestly, I don't think you I, you could sue Apple over what about the, the cartoon. Thing, you know? I mean, but do you really think you could sue uh, Apple for naming their physical product a Mighty Mouse or the Mighty Mouse cartoon? It's because it, the 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 ground it, 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 it likely wouldn't win in the court of law because it's a it's a very different uh, item. Usually, patents. And, yeah, so and, you, usually the, and thing, it has to be within the same genre. Yeah, like the burden I mean, of it's proof. It's just like if the, I could if I could say uh, the burden of proof I thought was like deceptively similar. In other words, it's like it's it, it, it's similar items. It, it's not the spelling. Yeah, it has it's, to be within the same genre, really, for it to be. And, uh, and, and nobody's gonna confuse a mouse going. With this annoying thing that I want to pick up and throw against the wall. <laughs> I, I think to be honest, they just change it to, to Magic Mouse just to have uniformity because Magic is their really their new mantra. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, that, that's the other thing here. For, whether you love or hate Apple, you have to admit they're geniuses at marketing and spin on marketing. So uh, I, uh, this is the other reason I don't get that this is still going on. I mean, honestly, I think they're good enough at marketing that they could probably make any name stick if they just go with the right name first that isn't going to get them sued. You know, they could, they, you know, Apple could probably have stood up on stage last week. There were a few companies that could do this, but be, because they're Apple, they probably could have stood up on stage and go, everybody's talking about the cloud, but what is the cloud? The cloud doesn't make any sense. We've come up with a better name for the cloud. It's yeah, let's say it's somebody made, has a, has a, they name their product iCloud, and let's say it has, has something to do with air purification. Yeah. And, um, you know, maybe in a, a, assisting your central air conditioning or something like that. They, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have really anything to stand on if they were trying to go after Apple for the use of iCloud. Exactly. Anyways, moving on to more what the effingness in the Apple world. Um, am I the only one who thinks this is absurd? Um, that they're sending two iPhones into space. I think they'll be on the floor. <laughs> you, you acted like you were going to say something, but, but you're like, I don't know what to say. I, I, I don't really, I mean, NASA's full of contractors. They decided to write an application for iOS, that's what they did, you know. Well, no, no, and, and I don't have a problem with that, but the thing that I'm scratching my head at here is they're concerned about the phone antenna causing confusions with things. So on these two iPhones that they're sending into space, 
to use the <laughs> iOS app, they've turned the phone antennas off so that they don't have the interference they're concerned about. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you've basically turned them into, yeah, you basically turned them into very expensive iPod touches. Uh, why, why aren't you sending iPod touches into space? This is obviously more about promoting the iPhone than, than, yeah. than. Well, I think somebody just got wind of, of them taking up the iPhones and. They, they, I guess once they bring well, down to earth, they want to make calls, and I don't know. Well, he couldn't make calls, and the the antenna's been disabled, so even if they tried, it, they can't enter no, the phone mode. No, calls on earth, you know, like, once you just get down there, you can make calls there, you know. Are you, are you trying to imply that the Plutarians use iPhones? <laughs> <laughs> you mean the planet that isn't a planet? Uh... Uh, th this was right up your alley. Did you read this response from that Corpatino councilwoman? Um, what? Which, which, where, where are we at? Uh, the, the next one. She uh, Apparently you're not the only one who was going, why the hell are you asking about free wife? Oh, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I went on and on about you know, <laughs> the council members are just idiots. No, it, it's How got, embarrassing. It's gotten so bad, she's actually issued an official statement as to why she was asking Steve Jobs about why I fly. I immediately uh, posted. About, I said, hey, this is how embarrassing to have a politician out there. I said, Steve Jobs should be shaking his head. I mean, nobody, nobody had really, except for two legitimate questions, which was that traffic, uh, the traffic deal. Um, I think was that was the concern, and, and then uh, her first question, maybe, what is it going to contribute? I, I can somewhat see that uh, as a valid question. Everything else was, oh, I got to talk to Steve Jobs. Well, you know, no, and, there's a, and, you know, and, and her response is in the light of that. Why she is, like, acknowledging, okay, maybe I shouldn't have asked about that. I mean, she goes on a typical political reply. You know, I've served the board well for the last seven and a half years, and yada, 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 yada. It's like, to make it clear, I'm well aware that Apple is one of our biggest taxpayers. So she, even in her response letter to explain why she wasn't wasting time asking about Wi-Fi, she's doing Apple worship. You know, it's... So maybe it's always been an ass kisser. Yeah, it's... Uh, God, you know, she, basically this letter uh, goes all around the, the question, you know, it's like, oh, my official answer to why I was asking a dumb question is Apple is great, and yeah, yeah. I mean, she does eventually get to the point. But, but she did deliberately lead to this, because after Jobs had said, well, we're the largest taxpayer, she goes, oh, well, besides taxes. Well, what else is a company supposed to do? And Give uh, you free water and all kinds of that? I mean, this is insane. Yeah, I... I, 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 I this, this poor woman's trying to do damage control, you know. I thought it was also silly that the uh, chairman showed, kept showing his iPad. Oh, I just, you know, I love this. Can you open up an, an Apple store in Cupertino? I mean, all this. I was like, these. You know, and she, she and she she starts addressing on that too, even though it wasn't her. You know, regarding the iPads, again another fall blow up joke, and yeah, 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 it's like Apple pays its taxes and yada 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 and yada yada yada. yada. It's like <laughs> I, I I wonder when their next election is, because this is the fact that this has turned into a, a basically a national thing for these. It, it, maybe they should, it, and like you're saying, there was no reason for him to really go down there. They basically dragged him down there. They it's wanted like they to see. Him down there. Anybody else could have been there. Yeah, I. It was just to, to 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 get a whiff of of jobs, and so they talked to him. Well, know? no, see, so that was the thing. Anybody else would have sent in. They count a bunch of groupies. That's what they are. They're groupies. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess I can understand that, but it's like you're saying. It's all that was needed here is for him to send like a 10-page thing going, this is what I want to do, this is how much it's going to cost, this is the effect on the city. You know, that that was it. Uh, but no, you have to come down here. We if, we're, if we had a clock running, his time is far more valuable uh, than what they're doing there. Uh, very quite obvious. So that's, that's, that's very evident to me that... that Every minute that's ticking is, is costing him far more money than the, 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 the clock ticking from the council. And uh, to me, it's just a, a massive waste of resources. You know, love or hate Steve Jobs, 
How much money would y'all have give to be a fly on the in on the window or somewhere on the inside of his car after he got out of there? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Steve Jobs had it in him to be that tactful, to be quite honest. You know, uh, I, like yeah. he was. He was <laughs> that's like, yeah. Uh, I mean, there, he, there are times that uh, Apple's his baby, and that's why he lets um, the corporation itself and those that he employs have it. Um, I think outside of that, I think that he he's just going to be like anyone else that has passion about one subject and. They're going to drive it home, and then perhaps it's something else. They're going to, uh, and especially if it doesn't, if, if the thing that they're talking about doesn't involve them directly, of course they're not going to treat them the same way. Well, and uh, and you're, and you're saying is times. Like, you for me up there. I, uh, I'm I'm known to just, I because I don't care. Well, no, but so see, I, 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 honestly, I, lo- love or hate, I I think. I don't think it was a waste of his time, whether you love or hate Apple. Uh, and this is one of the reasons I say, love or hate them, you have to admit them uh, as a company as a whole are geniuses at marketing. Because the reality is, why, like you're saying, uh, I mean, it, 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 his time is worth more than the sun. That was probably, that 20 minutes he spent down there was probably millions of dollars of free advertising for the Apple Corporation. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, think about it. This the video's gone viral, the internet all over. There's God and knows how many. The same thing as his keynote. What, I mean, wasn't that the same day as the keynote? Uh, I think it was actually the next day, but I'd have to go look. I don't think it was the exact. It might have been the same day. Uh, I started finding out about it the next day. So yeah, it might. I think he did it. You're right. He would have done it the day of the keynote because it would have taken the day for it to get up and everything. But yeah. It's, but you know, it, it's like you say. It's it, it's an additional week of free advertising for Apple as a company. So, moving on to the other Antichrist. <laughs> Microsoft. No, we're not to the third Antichrist yet. We're only on the AT and T Antichrist at this point. Yeah. Ah. Oh. PlayStation's new handheld will be on AT and T. Yeah, it, it's. I, <laughs> You know, th- this is one of those things, I'm sticking it in here as what the fuck, because AT&T, as, you know, an ode to try and get some good press. Well, Sony should be put up as what the fuck for that name. Oh, what yeah, is- no, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. But I, I, I know. Man, nobody said they were too smart. I'm sure it means something better in another language. Beta with cheese. It, it, anyways, AT and T is giving free Wi-Fi to 20 areas in New York City. Uh, but to give you an idea of just how much bad PR AT and T has right now for trying to become the nation's telecom provider, uh, why so they can push data caps on everybody. Uh, the re- the number the first reaction to this wasn't oh thanks AT and T for the free Wi-Fi. It's, how's my privacy going to hold up under that open Wi-Fi? Is it secure? <laughs> Is it shot? Um, a, I don't like AT&T, but do we really think this is AT&T's prerogative? I mean, I, I always get a little mixed feelings when everybody's like, Hi, that unencrypted, unsecure Wi-Fi, how dare you? I'm like, why are you using it then? You know, or am I the only one who's thinking that way? Uh, you know, people, they don't like to think about technology. You know, they, they don't really think about it, you know. I don't know. Well, here's the funny part. Uh, guess you also made a deal for free Wi-Fi with at t Who? You'll never guess. Uh, Apple? Nintendo. Their 3DS works with uh, uh, at t screen Wi-Fi that's the other thing but you brought this up a while ago this is the thing I don't get there's a number of providers and so Nintendo's now another one the Kindle does this too there is a number of devices and providers that go to AT&T get free unmetered unlimited bandwidth for their cus- for, yes, for their customers and uh, either over Wi-Fi or the cell phone network. Uh, And and it's like, okay, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
AT&T, your network is so congested that you have uh -huh. to put these ridiculously small bandwidth caps on all your paying customers. Yeah. But yet you can afford to make these backroom deals that give billions of dollars worth of bandwidth away for wait a minute here. I don't see it as, as free. There's a there's a deal where they're where they're getting paid, believe. It's not this is not this is not charity, trust me. Oh, I, I know it's not charity, but it's like it, it goes to me, I'm like, I as your paying customer am getting far less than I would going through someone else who made a backroom deal. I'm like, I, if, if their network's so overloaded, how, why are they making all these deals? I, I, that's the thing I don't get. Well, the thing is that Tendo's going with just the Wi-Fi stuff. They're not going with the 4G, uh, the 3G, or the 4G. And it's Sony's uh, Vega, or you know their new gaming platform, that's going to be going with the 4G network. Right. Yeah. And the for Wi-Fi stuff. Because they're, they're trying to compete against iPhone. Well, no, and, the, 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 no, and that goes credence to one of Bits' theory, which is it, it, that's becoming the gaming device. It's like, um, I, I, I really do think he's right about that. It's for the, the device, the next generation of 10-year-olds, uh, bit, Bits' kids and any kids that are approaching 10 in the next five years, they're going to be deciding between whether or not to tell mommy and daddy to buy the iPhone or the iOS device, the Sony's thing or Nintendo's thing. It's like that that's the head that's going on there. Uh, I'm really surprised to see Sony doing that, actually, because Sony is also making an Android-powered PlayStation. Uh, so they already have that out. Yeah, I know, they already have that, but I'm surprised to see them putting one of their own devices against one of their own devices. It's especially given what's going on right now in the console market for them. It's just it's an interesting move to be fighting yourself against yourself, you know? Yeah. But, but getting back to AT&T, this is not their broadband. This is uh, Wi-Fi. So this is... A handheld device, a handheld gaming device with their iPod Touch was more of an accident. Since Steve Jobs really doesn't care about video games. Yeah, we'll get onto that in I a minute. I disagree. I think they're all about games. The double GPU and the iPad too is very clear indication. Yeah, but that it's that way. Well, the iPhone first generation was a joke, you know. Oh, of course it was, but it, I, I think he's totally embracing it. What their intention was in 2007. I know. I I, 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 think that's. I, 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 have to agree with you. I think it's the second thing. There's two things with the iOS platform. Thing one with the iOS platform. Steve Jobs got up and said, "We don't need any apps." Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the hackers. Yeah. The hackers go through Safari. Yeah. The hackers disagreed and said, "Oh hell yes, we need apps." And Apple reluctantly listened and has made billions of dollars off of admitting they were wrong. And I think the gaming is the same thing. You know, Steve Jobs said, I hate games, games, I don't like games, on and on. But he's realized that it's an equally sized market. I mean, the reality is people spend billions of dollars a year on nothing. <laughs> It's like, that's a good deal. Why not be in that market, you know? And I think he's kind of seen the light in that. You know, he's, he's reluctantly admitted quietly, I was wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I've got the dual-core GPU. No other mobile device yet is deploying with dual-core GPU. They, I mean, they, that, that was what they were primarily after, which was graphics on that thing. Yeah. And, and, uh, Oh no! That, that that device was made to game, not to work. <laughs> it was made for yeah. ten, it was made for ten yeah, to eighteen year olds to go. Yeah. Now getting back to eighteen, guys, this is not broadband. This is not. Uh, oh no! I I, I I I know. I I, I this, what is their, this is has nothing to do with your bitching about logistics. Oh no! I, I I was we went off on four or five tangents there. No, the actual okay. story here is about the is about the Wi-Fi, and, and honestly, with the original story we were getting on, I was going to go, I don't like AT&T for all of the side tangents we went on and all the other bullshit going on, but the reality here is, I don't think it's their responsibility to encrypt open Wi-Fi access. I think open Wi-Fi spots like that, like they're providing here, are, you know, use at your own risk. You shouldn't be doing sensitive or secure stuff on somebody else's network unencrypted. You just shouldn't be doing it. 
And, and I, I don't know how they could make these open and free like this and encrypt them, because then they'd have to like give everybody the key, which would kind of defeat the whole purpose. Because then anybody else could sign on to the network and be on the network and monitor the network. So it's, you know... <laughs> Well, no, and, and this is one of the things I think the average user should, you know, have that privacy kit on them to secure stuff, you know, it's to prevent, uh, or, you know, it, more and more people should be getting used to the idea of encrypting their own packets, um, and, and using, you know, your emails should be encrypted, your interconnections should be encrypted. Yeah, it, it's, I mean, that's just something we should be getting used to. Um... And I don't know why people don't do that. I guess it's a little intimidating. People don't think they have to. I mean, it still kind of scares the bejesus out of me, the number of people who think it's okay to just email things like official government IDs, credit cards, and bank accounts. So I'm just like, what planet were you raised on? Especially doing it international. But that's like, there's a number of people. That's what they, Yeah, I thought, okay, to verify you, I just need a copy of your driver's license, a utility bill, and everything else, and if you'll just email that to me, uh, you know, it's like not a prayer's chance, <laughs> but uh, anyways.